hey, today I'm doing a video with Romain, who is uh, doing an internship with me uh, this week. And we thought it's a good opportunity to make a video on how to uh, play the, the, the Xbox or how to not play the Xbox, actually. What we're gonna do is show you two typical postures that Romain is taking when he plays at home. So this is on bed and I'll show you a simple trick to improve these postures. They won't be perfect, but they will be better and that will minimize the impact on your tissues. In the conclusion, I'll tell you how to really protect your health uh, while still gaming. And uh, well, let's go, let's have a look at the two postures. We see how we improve them and we see each other again for the conclusion. Okay, so this is the first gaming posture. We will first observe the posture, then try to understand it, then try to fix it. Okay? So what I observe is that the lower back is round. How do I observe it? Well, I can look at it, but I can also palpate the vertebrae and feel the tips of the vertebrae, like the crocodile. So this round back will overload in particular the intervertebral discs. So now, why does he have a round back? Two reasons. Number one, he's leaning forward. Yeah? And number two, his knees are higher than his hips meaning that the hip joint is very closed and that creates a lot of pressure in the hip joint and therefore the pelvis tilts to reopen the hip joint angle. So this is region one. Region two is the neck. There are two problems in the neck. One is related to the position of the head. See, if I want the neck to be, say, in a kind of neutral position, it's got to be aligned with the rest of the spine, meaning that his line of sight is in direction of the floor. But that's not where the TV is. The TV is there, straightforward. So he does this. And this is a source of muscle strain, upper trapezius, levator scapulae, as well as of pressure on the cervical vertebrae. So that's problem one. Problem two is that his shoulders are raised. Why are his shoulders raised? Because he's leaning on his forearms. Hence the weight of the torso is making this shred shoulders and shrug shoulders is another source of strain in the upper trapezius. So these are the main issues related to this first posture. So let's fix this disaster. I'm going to put not one cushion but two cushions because although uh, they are thick they will shrink under the effect of his weight. So let's sit down. Yep. You see that the increased comfort in the hip joint made it possible for Romain to sit with a flatter back. In this position, he can of course still slouch. I mean, you know, there's no, there's no lumbar support. But let's say it's a bit less tempting to slouch than in the previous position. What you have to be careful though is, if you sit with the shoulder blades behind the pelvis, this is super heavy for the neck and the lower back. So when you sit, you want your torso to be slightly forward, okay? Um, next step is to resolve this uh, forearm thing. And what we will do is we will put two cushions here and give him back the, the handle and see how that feels. So here the hands are supported by the cushions which will help the upper body to slump much less and this will protect the neck. Okay, second posture now. You see that the back is still round and what's quite funny in this picture is that actually he has put a, a pillow under his pelvis but you see it's completely useless it doesn't prevent the lower back from being round and the other thing is that the head is actually super forward here and you see there's a lot of compression here in the front of the neck which is the scalene triangle and the sternocleidomastoid this muscle is shortened so here the head is so much forward that there's a real risk of compression leading to tingling uh, and pain in the arms and the shoulders. Now, how do we fix this? Well, again, we'll do the same. We'll put Romain in a better position yeah, and wonder what we should do to maintain him like this. I'm going to do a few things. Number one is put more cushions yeah, like here and here and instruct him to sit really deep into the cushions. So let's go. And then I see that he could have a tendency to bring his shoulders back there. So I'm going to help him with an additional cushion here. Yeah. And then there's still a risk that he slides forward because um, the, the legs are, are pulling him in this direction. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to do that. 
yeah and to do that I will put another pillow which I'm trying to make as kind of round as I can yeah so fold it in, in two and to finish the job I'm gonna do something which can sound quite strange for a posture therapist is I'm gonna tell him to cross his legs why because when I tell him to cross his legs basically the lower shield will be sinking in the mattress and that will act as a breaking force because the weight of the first leg is now on the second leg so the weight of the two legs is on one heel instead of being on two heels yeah so now with this position is more stable and will not glide forward so easily there's still one thing we need to do is make it more comfortable for him to play i don't want the arms to be the, the elbows to be spread to the side like this so this cushion is maybe a bit thick for the job but it's better than nothing and it's quite comfortable in carrying the weight of the arms so you see basically what we have tried to do with both postures is number one we try and improve the posture as much as we can and number two then the next adjustment is duration how frequently do you need to take breaks you know in a posture like this I would still recommend that you take a break at least every 30 minutes and during that break you can practice my upper body reset which is the most famous exercise I have which you find in the link at the end of this video